r slash ass credit what video game made you rage quit and you haven't played the game since fable 3 you could join another player and complete missions with them i was three quarters in joined my brother and encountered a bug we weren't aware of we did a media blackout it causes you to lose all of your gear your kick-ass sword everything so when i returned in my game i had nothing anymore i got so angry closed the game and never finished it my dad rage quit we fit because it called him obese not rage quit but i entered an online tournament in tech gen 7 and got destroyed on stream while the commentator said i'm bad at the game this discouraged me so much i haven't played since fifa fuck that scripted piece of shit of a game fuck that piece of shit anyone that thinks momentum or scripting or we isn't part of the game honestly has no awareness or is purposely being obtuse it's bad enough when you fucking trample somebody but your 93 of strikers can hit the broadside of a barn but then even when i win it's not satisfying i've had days where my opponent was clearly better but i literally couldn't miss no matter who is shooting and from where they'd miss like four one-on-ones with my keeper but then i'd run up and hit a 30-yard banger my players would close gaps on their own so I'd smother any attack from my opponent. For him, his defenders did fuck all. I could shoot and run through their players like they weren't even there. I've had the opposite happen as well. The game is honestly broken, it's a cash machine so I don't expect changes, but I'm disappointed that the game I grew up with is such a gigantic cheap piece of shit in 2020. I stopped buying it after 2018 and my quality of life is honestly better. Fuck this game. Cuphead on the Xbox. Fighting Satan at the end. All the changing levels just did my head in and I always hit the wrong number in the dice. First time in my life I seriously considered throwing my controller through my TV. I never even made it that far. It was pleasantly difficult until I got to the giant robot doctor guy. I watched videos and tried over and over for a couple days but I just couldn't win so I quit playing it and never started back up. That stupid Lion King game that came out on PC in the 90s. I never made it past level 2. Overwatch. I got to Masters as Reinhardt and it just became so fucking toxic. It ruined the game for me. It eventually became too stressful to be fun. When I tried to pick it back up, they'd added a few characters and made a bunch of tweaks and everyone yelled at me when I picked Reinhardt because he wasn't meta anymore. Made me sad. I love that game. Rainbow Six Siege. I am very bad at games. I quit after a teammate walked in front of my line of fire resulting in his death, being called every name in the book and then being team killed at the beginning of every round by his friends. This is one of the reasons single player games are my favorite kind. Dying Light I had completed the game, got the best gold weapons and vehicle parts, and now I was gonna tackle side missions and such. Till my file got corrupted. I lost everything there was no way I was ever gonna play that game again so I didn't. Ark, Survival Evolved I had amassed at least 2000 hours worth of assets on an official server. I poured my life into that game every day. It was like a second life, and I took it seriously. Then I got wiped by the Alpha tribe over something stupid. I didn't take it well, to put it lightly. And I quit for about a year. Came back and tried to start again but got ganked on the beach and quit again. Came back a good long while later and got started on a super easy server and I kept getting knocked unconscious and snatched off my dino by all the new shitty dinos they added and kept losing all the dinos I tamed while I was gone after being killed while trying to get back to them. Someone was nice enough to donate one of their dinos but I got snatched off of it by another wild dino, knocked out, then killed and that tame died because it was on passive so I straight up depurchased the game from my steam library and never looked back. My wife and I had such a love-slash-hate relationship with Arkansas back before server transfers things were pretty good. There was a reasonable alpha tribe and relative peace. Then they opened up server transfers. We were part of the alpha tribe at this point, and we got wiped. Ragakeet. Came back a few months later, rejoined alphas, after a few months go wiped and Ragakeet again. After a few months we tried a private server. The owner said it was paid many months in advance, and peaceful interactions would be encouraged. My wife and I were big care bears so we were happy as pigs in mud. One day the server just wasn't there, and the owner didn't respond to contacts. The Division 2 desperately needs a companion app API, so I can tell which of the gear drops are worth anything. You get 25 to 50 pieces every hour. My bank is full, my interest in sorting through it to find the good pieces for various builds is zero. Bioshock Infinite for Xbox 360. I unlocked 1999 mode I think it's called, and it's supposed to be harder enemies, 
lower resources and the big thing is that respawning is expensive. You can find a lot of in-game money literally everywhere but $100 is a lot. If you don't have $100 you restart to the beginning of the whole game. I made it to the very last fight with Songbird and I have completely run out of everything. Ammo, vigor and money. And Elizabeth can't find me anything. I can't scrap for ammo when there's so many enemies shooting me. I just shut the game off. I come back to this game 3 years later on my Xbox One because it is now backwards compatible. Load up the last save, see the predicament I was in 3 years ago, die, and I'm restarting the game from the beginning. Big nope for me. Fucking Star Citizen. I come back to this game every year or so and I'm always amazed at how much they've done since last time I played it. But I always end up rage quitting because of some really annoying bug. Last time it was the refueling bug where I had a ship full of mining loot but I ran out of gas so I stopped at one of the Lagrange stations to refuel. But it doesn't work. After mucking about with it for hours I finally just gave up. Too human, terrible game with horrendous controls. I could barely play it to start with. I got to a difficulty spike where I kept dying and for those who don't know respawning takes about 1 to 3 minutes in this single player game and every time you have to watch this drawn out animation. I never went back and glad for my sanity that I didn't. Destiny 2, Bungie made the game feel like a chore dot instead of, hey I was here for this cool thing it became. Fuck I have another 2 days to grind the same mission over and over for season pass progress. I left before Forsaken. Jumped on the Shadow Keep bandwagon as well when IRL friends started playing. I rage quit when, trying for the hardest part of the Harbinger title emo, after soloing Pit of Heresy I didn't get the triumph unlocked. Only after I completed it did I find out that you cannot leave the instance to get the triumph, which isn't mentioned anywhere in game. The dungeon has IMF checkpoint system. Too much time down the drain catching up, then that? No thanks, I'm out. Seasonal pass thing is BS as well. Khakis did a really good video of all the seasonal mods not working on all gear. I get a bit of RNG, but it's RNG on RNG on RNG on RNG for the best armor each, freaking, season. D1 was incredible and I played non-stop. D2 just felt... off. The multiple DLCs didn't get me excited and the mechanics changes just made me miss the old days of D1. XCOM beat it on normal, decided to try a higher difficulty. Early mission there's a floater around a corner with low health. I'll have a shotgun or break cover to get a good shot and finish him off. 95% to hit. Miss. Damn, well that sucks but 95 isn't 100. Fortunately I have another guy within range. Second shotgunner also runs up for the point blank 95%. Also miss. Floater one shots shotgunner dead. That wasn't the rage quit, not quite. I did rage reload the safe however. Same mission like turn 3 sniper takes a shot at a basic sectoid. 100% to hit. 100%. Miss. Missed on 100%. Sectoid returns fire from across the map with his dinky little pistol, crits the sniper, insta dead. That was the last time I played XCOM. League of Legends. The game itself is fantastic and fun. But I still remember the match that made me uninstall. I was playing ranked with a friend, but I was laning against some cheese composition where I had to play the first minutes of the game 1v2. Suffice to say that didn't go well and all the meanwhile my team is flaming me for not being able to farm CS, sitting behind tower letting them get it and dying to them. Yeah no. With my work schedule I get the one hour or so a day on my computer where I'm not replying to emails or sending documents and I now refuse to play a game that involves other people. All I wanted to do was play the one match because my friend invited me. Instead I get harassed by my team for being bad whilst they are still losing their own lanes despite the obvious advantage they have of being always 4v3 due to me taking two people's attention at all times. NGL, I am bad at the game. OFC I am, I'm no 17 years old Asian kid with 1000s of hours on the game. I'm a grown ass man with a job and priorities. But honestly this has killed off any drive for me to play an online only game ever again. Thief 2014 that awful attempt by Square Enix to reboot the Thief franchise which they had inherited the rights to but didn't really understand, using that awful game studio Eidos Montreal. Thief 2014 stole the player agency that older Thief games had and didn't give it back. I am no longer controlling Garrett, the level maker is, and my job is just to read the level maker's mind and guess which solution is the one that's actually been implemented. I am punished if I try to use a tactic of my own making. Punished by finding out the hard way that the move I was trying to make Garrett do isn't implemented here, so my tactic will fail. Example, Garrett can easily jump a 3 meter gap from rooftop to rooftop. You can make him do it in multiple places in the game. 
but he can't jump across a half meter trap trigger plate. If you try, you find that the jump button has no effect there. It's only implemented in the locations the level map maker chose to enable it. This is because they want you to disable the trap from a control panel somewhere nearby and the only way they could make you bother to do that when Garrett is clearly able to jump over the trigger is to make sure your jump controls aren't implemented there. That's one example but I could go on and on. The old games allowed the player to control the character, and if the game didn't obey, it was the game that was cheating. In 2014, the game no longer obeyed the player, now it's the player's job to obey the game, and I hate those kinds of games. Oblivion. I don't know what was wrong with my disc but the quest to cure vampirism was glitched and would never let me complete it. So anytime I contracted it I'd have to suck it up, pun intended, and deal with the side effects. But vampirism fucking sucks in oblivion. So I bit the bullet and decided to start a fresh game. I literally did not level up until I got my own house and bed because I was afraid of sleeping. But then for some reason I slept in a bed on a ship docked at the capital and of course I woke up and had vampirism. I tried everything I could think of at the time to get rid of it. I don't remember if I could have cured it in early stages with potions but I've only recently thought of this possibility, but I still just had to tough it out and be a vampire. Until I went into a portal to kill Tedras and when I came back out it was midday, I had no potions, and I couldn't get to shelter fast enough to avoid dying. So I was trapped in that portal. Pissed me off so much that I haven't played it since.